Hi, and welcome to Creating Cadence, a podcast for life and work in motion. I'm your host, Mish Bondizio, a writer, coach, consultant, and solo entrepreneur. I'm also the author of The Cadence Effect. I work with high achievers stuck on the toxic treadmill of hustle culture and the hamster wheel of overwork to help them transform how they approach life, work, and business so they can activate more of their potential and perform better in every part of their life at a cadence that's more suitable to them, despite this fast-paced world we live in. This is episode 46, the second episode of season 8, published in September 2023. So last week I grumbled about how crappy the weather has been in the UK for months, and things have subsequently changed as we are now experiencing a heat wave in the final few weeks of summer, whilst elsewhere the world unfortunately floods. A stark reminder of the changing climate that I also spoke about in the last episode, and how we need to be approaching these challenges with courage, curiosity and optimism, alongside a grit mindset and solution-oriented attitude. But back to the task at hand. In the last episode, I explained why I wrote my new book, which you can find at thecadenceeffect.com, and I spoke about three specific concepts that are central to creating cadence. And that brings me to today's interview, which is with an energetic, magnetic woman who has inspired and mentored me on both my book writing journey and my ongoing goal of continual improvement on the health and wellness front. Trudy Roth is a writer and meditation teacher dedicated to helping people express themselves authentically in all realms. With more than three decades of ghostwriting, content creation and creative expression under her belt, Trudy crafts and communicates stories with heart for many individuals and businesses. She's also a produced playwright, a former YouTube personality and a Vedic meditation teacher. She is passionate about shining a spotlight on the positive steps humans take every day to make the world a better place. During my chat with Trudy, she talks about the power of meditation to support health and focus, and how it's easy to get stuck in maintenance mode instead of being more flexible and adaptable to the changing needs of our environment. She also talks about how cadence helps us to be in our zone of genius and how creating deeper connections with our customers helps us to work with a deeper purpose. Trudy offers valuable insights based on her experience working as a writer and marketer, and I think you'll really enjoy hearing what she has to say in her easygoing way. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So welcome, Trudy. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Nish, thank you so much. I am thrilled to be here and very honored. So thank you for having me. My pleasure. Awesome. So just to provide my listeners with a little bit of context about how we know each other, for many years now, I've been part of the Unemployable Initiative, which is linked to Movement Ventures that you are a co-partner of. I am also a member of the Well and Wealthy community that you host online. And I had the pleasure of meeting you in person last year at the Creator Economy Expo in Phoenix. And since then, we've collaborated in a few different ways. Most importantly for me, you were a beta reader for my recently published book, The Cadence Effect, which is what this podcast is all about. And there's a lot that you do in your work and your life that corresponds with what I am trying to advocate for in terms of creating more cadence in our days and, and momentum in our life. So uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you because you really influenced and supported my work and life in so many ways from helping me to improve my writing and marketing skills to becoming a better meditator, for which I'm super grateful. Oh, I wish I love that. And that's my pleasure. Those are all the places that I like to connect with people. You know, I would say my dharma is to help people express themselves authentically in all realms. So when we hang out together, I get very curious about what you're up to and who you are. And my recollection of my first encounter with you was through the Unemployable Initiative. And you had done a presentation on burnout uh, that I thought was just excellent and touching and relatable. And I so appreciated everything you had to say. And I became really interested in your work at that point because you took something very personal and turned it into your life's work, which I find, you know, that's the whole jam is to find meaning and purpose in what you do. And I think for most of us, or for many of us, part of where we find our special purpose comes from adversity, comes from a place of, you know, where did I struggle? I know that that's definitely been my path too, you know, where in meditation in particular, I'm a meditation teacher. 
And I was led to that because I had tremendous anxiety. I had an anxiety disorder as a kid. And then as I was approaching another big life transition, kids, I have a couple kids, the, the oldest was uh, on his way to college. I thought I got to do something to make sure that I don't go down that rabbit hole again. And that's when I found meditation. And it was sort of like, it was such a profound tool for me. And it, I had so many incredible experiences early on that I didn't really even feel like I had a choice. It just felt like I needed to learn how to teach people how to meditate. I teach a mantra-based meditation, Vedic meditation. And I was off to the races from there. So, and you, I recognized a kindred spirit because that's the same idea, you know, that you really, the things that you struggled with, you had to come up with, how do I handle this? How do I shift the cadence at which I've been running my life to something that's manageable and not just manageable, something that supports me thriving and blossoming and growing. And I find that to be so appealing about you. And really, you know, that's where we're very well aligned, I would say, is that that kind of quest for how do you get into a groove that helps you become intentionally productive and happy and healthy. I mean, without the healthy part, they, there's nothing, nothing left to do. So that's a great, great life's work. It's been an absolute joy and pleasure to see you articulate. I saw that the early stages, so to see you articulate in full bloom in such a helpful and easy to read and easy to understand and fun to read and understand book, that is just, that's the bomb right there. Thank you so much. I'd forgotten about that burnout talk that you mentioned. Um, and I agree, we are kindred spirits. And isn't it sad, though, that so many of us have to go through these hardships before we find the better way of doing things? So you've been on a kind of a different journey, but a similar journey in terms of finding yourself and finding what works for you. And we'll get into the work elements of what you do and how that aligns with your outlook on life and the world. But what I'd like to know, first of all, is kind of where are you at in your life at the moment and how does that impact on your well-being and creativity and productivity? That's a great question. Well, you know, so part of what I do, I write for a personal growth and development newsletter called Further. Further.net is the place to find it. And so it's a very Gen X perspective, but I think it's very common for anybody who sort of reaches, you know, that 50-ish age, which is where I'm at now, to be in what we call the sandwich generation. So that's where I am right now. So I have two kids, one of whom is um, pretty, he's off and running in his career. He's 24. One who's just getting started. She's 22. And I have a, an elderly dad and he's in, uh, lives in a, in a assisted living kind of place. And mom passed a couple of years ago. So it's almost, it's so interesting. It's like every phase, every age has its, has its things, you know, when the kids were little and I didn't have a chance to breathe and it really dictated how I, all the decisions I made in my life, how my career went from being a corporate vice president marketing kind of person to being <laughs> a freelancer. I always like to say I went from being like, you know, chief ass kisser to chief ass wiper <laughs> in one year. <laughs> and that was its own thing. And now this at this phase, it's sort of like I'm at the starting gates again. Like, hey, I can really go become self-realized and I have all these things cooking and ideas of things I want to do. And it still fits and starts. You know, your kids, you know, as a parent, as a very involved parent, they still, my daughter just moved home. <laughs> I was so used to walking around, you know, doing my work in my undergarments and hanging out and just taking and my cadence was very easy. I'm back on a schedule. She comes home. She wants a snack. She needs dinner. We're, I'm back to square one a little bit. And also so conscious that this is the moment. This is a wonderful time and a time to, to reconnect before she goes off and it's really empty nest, empty nest. So I'm conscious of all that. Same with my dad. You know, he's had some health issues, but nothing too terrible. There's a rough patch, you know, last winter where, you know, everything ground to a halt because he was hospitalized for a week. And then it was another six weeks in rehab where I went every day. So it's like a lot of fits and starts, I think, in this phase, but I'm starting to believe that's every phase. And the beauty of being in this era that we're in, where so much of what we do is online and really can be on our own schedules, it's helpful, but it's still doesn't mean that there's, it's not from a personal standpoint, there's no, 
you know, this idea that there's some delineation between personal and professional is just utter BS, in my opinion, because they all cross over. You know, it's like I'm calling my dad's doctor on one hand and then I'm banging out a piece for a client on the next. And it's like if you looked at like what my daily to do lists are, half the things on there are like taking care of someone or something um, that has nothing to do with my professional life. And then, you know, the other half. And, you know, sometimes when it's like, oh, I shouldn't be doing work right now because it's a Saturday, it's like, oh, this is the best day because I'm not getting interrupted 85 million times. And (laughs) everybody takes off on Saturday and has fun. And so sometimes I just find that's the best day for me to get my my actual stuff done. Yeah. So a question around kind of your routines and your habits that help to support you in these challenging times, you know, because obviously if you're in a situation where you can't necessarily have a fixed routine every day because the demands of the day change based on things that are well beyond your control, what are your go-to things that you use to support your productivity and your well-being so that you can handle this and stay resilient and strong? Well, I mean, number one, and this is, you know, of course, a meditation teacher is going to tell you this, but mm-hmm. I meditate and it is sacred. So I meditate, my meditation schedule, it's 20 minutes twice a day. It's Vedic meditation. You know, we say same tree, different branch as transcendental meditation. And that is my anchor. So I meditate when I first wake up and then I meditate in the later afternoon prior to eating dinner. But it's sort of like a bookend of my day. Because I will usually meditate after I've kind of finished all the work of the day um, around five o'clock or so. Mm -hmm. And um, even if I go back and I still have things to finish and things to do later on, it's fine because that fills me up with what we call adaptation energy. So that, you know, what I'm doing when I meditate is I'm releasing stresses. I'm conscious of that. And in the type of meditation that I teach, if you have a busy meditation where it's a bunch of thoughts and I'm doing laundry lists about what I have to do today, that's actually good news. This kind of idea that meditation is, you know, your mind is blank and the thoughts are like clouds. (laughs) They've all cleared. It's a clear blue sky. That's not really what happens. You know, I often like to say, you know, if you're, if somebody said to you, if you could just make your heart stop beating for like five minutes, it'd be really good for your health. You're, you're golden. (laughs) You know, it's like, that's absurd. And same with meditation. You know, the idea that you're going to make thoughts stop is not at all realistic, in my opinion. So what we do is transcend those thoughts. And, you know, any form of meditation, it's really finding a way to let the thoughts be and not engage with them. So just by starting that way really helps. I've actually recently started, this is uh, actually in a wellness challenge I've been leading in a community that I lead called Well and Wealthy. We just did a thing about gratitude. And I picked up I reignited a habit of doing just like three things I'm grateful for in the morning. It is such an amazing attitude adjustment. Like you find it's so much harder to be pissed off as the day goes on. And there's so many things that can piss you off, right? Nothing ever goes smoothly. Like that's also just an absolute fallacy. You know, and I I, want to correct something you said earlier too, because this is connected. So earlier you said, isn't it sad that we have to go through adversity sometimes to get to a place of, of, you know, connectedness, I suppose, with ourselves. Connectedness or, yeah, movement and, you know, redefining ourselves and things like that. And actually, from the Vedic perspective, there are three operator functions, right? So there's creation, Brahma, there's maintenance, Vishnu, and then there's destruction, Shiva. And it's a cycle. We see it every single day. You Mm -hmm. know, it's like you wake up, you know, you're destroying what you just had, sleep, And now you're going to start creating things in the day. So you constantly have to cycle through these three stages. And you, you know, the trap is trying kind of getting stuck in maintenance. Like everything has to stay the same. Everything has to be perfect. So from this perspective, I'm most interested in getting into a creative space. And so that means always that you have to go through a destructive space. And that's hard. Mm. That, I mean, you know, I'm not going to be cavalier about it because people go through awful things. And on the other side, they start going, okay, everything's how I knew it, what it was is gone. So now what is, what is it? And I sort of take every day like that too. So I don't get stuck anywhere. You know, when I find myself clinging on to something that I'm like, but it's supposed to work this way. It always did before for the last two weeks, you know, I was able to time box perfectly and get everything done and get everything in and, you know, figure everything out so smoothly. But now there's a roadblock and that roadblock is going to destroy what was, you know? So even for example, when my dad was very ill and in the hospital, it was scary. 
for a couple of months and I get very, I'm very much a caretaking kind of person. And mm-hmm. so I got very in the weeds with him. Even that, thanks to meditation and stuff, I was able to see it as a gift and also be able to go, well, I'll never have this time with him again. So put your computer down, explain to people that you owe things to, you're running a bit behind and why, and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And everybody was so gracious and kind. And and I still got stuff done because it was <laughs> my workaholism is a distraction. Um, so yeah, so that's I would say that that's on an everyday basis, just kind of having that perspective and that framework to look at and to feel into, you know, when things don't go the way that they were planned or hoped for or whatever, that that's just part of the grand scheme of life and take a breath, step outside, listen to a bird chirp and get back, get back to it. It's that that's the cadence that I kind of go with, which is that expect the unexpected, you know, uncertainty is certainty. Like one certain thing there is, everything is not for sure. So that I try to ride with that as much as possible. And and the only way that I feel like I could have done that is by kind of studying these philosophies and, and teaching myself how to meditate. Training my brain that way helps me not, I don't get hung up so much anymore. Mm. And that's, you know, I think where I, my anxiety came from is going, something has to be different. What I feel inside doesn't correlate to what's supposed to be, what it's supposed to look like, what it all looks like out there. So something's wrong. And that's a very fertile space for that anxiety to, to grow. And so being less focused out there and what's supposed to be and more inward, that space in between closes. So there's not a lot of fertile territory for anxiety to crop up. And now when it does crop up, because it's not like there's not anxiety and stress and even burnout or anything like that in regular days, but I, you know, I can recognize it and also go, well, it's not permanent. You know, I'm not stuck on it. This is not going to be how it is. And I'm not going to push myself to ride it out and, you know, tough through it because that just, you know, what what you resist persists. So I'm just going to let into it and and let things be. And that's, that's a cadence for me because that's mm-hmm. every day. Think about it. There's not one day where you're like, everything is perfect. That was amazing. <laughs> I mean, once in a blue moon, you might go, that was an amazing best day ever. And that's fabulous. We get that too. But the lion share is fits and starts and, you know, unexpected things, delights and not so delightful. I agree. Thank you so much for explaining about that distinction between the creation and the destruction and the maintenance cycles. And it is a cycle and that ties really closely to what it is when I talk about creating cadence instead of looking at work-life balance, thinking about how things need to adapt and adjust and be kind of elastic in terms of how they expand and contract based on the differing demands of your day. And in terms of an ideal day, it's more like ideal moments within a day. And as you say, that's where the gratitude right. practice can tie in as well, because you become grateful for those ideal moments and you really appreciate them when you start to notice them. So thank you so much for raising that. This ties in with the Shakti Sisters, which is your meditation business with your partner, Diana. And um, I love it on your website because you talk about adventures and consciousness. And so you make it a lot more accessible. It's not too formal. As you say, anybody can learn to meditate. And so for any of my listeners who are interested in exploring that further, I would suggest that they check out the Shakti Sisters newsletter as a starting point because it's a really great introduction. And I'll share links in the show notes to, to that. Okay, so you've explained a bit about what cadence means to you. And let's look at that now in the context of the different types of work that you do. We've spoken a bit about the meditation side, um, but how does cadence apply in terms of how you prepare yourself to support your clients? Before we get into what it is you actually do, how do you help yourself get into the best creative space you can be? Because a lot of the work that you do is obviously creatively focused. Right. Yeah. I mean, the lion's share of what I do in my day job is I'm a writer and I'm a ghostwriter. I do a lot of like a lot of my clients, I ghostwrite thought leadership things for books, for things like that. Then I, you know, I contribute to places. I work on website. It's, it's so varied. So that's a great question about creating cadence just, you know, as a freelancer, um, which is what I am. You have, you know, and I, I don't know that this is any different for people that don't freelance. And <laughs> we're constantly shifting gears mm. and, in my case, as a ghostwriter, 
I'm getting into somebody else's ethos. I'm getting into their cadence. How do they talk? How do they think? What what do they care about? And so the way to do that, my experience, I've tried it so many different ways. I've tried it this old school, like I have a list and I'll, I'll jump from one thing to the next. Um, what I'm finding now, and this may be about my age too, and just the stage of life that I'm at, where it's, it's easier for me to hold space when I carve out real space. So what I mean by that is I, I don't just hop from one thing to the next anymore. This idea of multitasking, which I always prided myself as being really good at, just feels really old school and, and not how I work best. So to prepare and to be in a cadence space, I, I try to carve out a chunk of time to work on a certain you know, in a certain project. And I get into the headspace. I also really like to do extra research. I really like to delve into, I like to care. I like to give a shit. Mm -hmm. And when I find I don't, that's not a great fit for me anymore. Mm -hmm. I try to move those clients off my, off my docket, off my schedule. I mean, that's sort of part of what I love doing too. It's like, I get to know my people and I, I really care deeply about them. I was just thinking of a client of mine who um, actually is in the UK and I haven't talked to her in a while. And I thought, oh, I really need to move, reach out and say hi and see how she's doing. Not because I'm farming for biz, but because I spent so much time, we worked together and she decided to sort of start writing her own stuff, which I totally support. It's great. And so that just kind of speaks to, I think, how I how I like to work and how the places that I really lean into, it makes it fun for me because I work solo all the time. <laughs> I'm alone with my dog. So I hope that answers the question. I, I think I may have it's started a, drifting a little bit. No, it definitely does. What I love about what you've said is how important purpose is for you as part of creating cadence for your work. And that purpose is around creating connection. And mm -hmm. so many people in business don't focus on any of that. And they're more status driven than perhaps purpose driven. Placing meaning at the center of how you work is so powerful. And I work in a very similar way. I find that I have very deep connections with those clients. We actually become friends. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's how I like to work. I like working with people I feel comfortable working with. And my clients are the same. We build a really deep and trusted relationship. And it sounds to me like you do the same with your clients in terms of placing yes. purpose at the center, which is, which is beautiful. So in terms of thinking about the different types of work that you do through movement consulting, which is all around digital marketing and business strategy, and then also your writing work through It's the True Story, how do you think the work that you do helps to support your clients in terms of their cadence? You know, how does what you do for them improve their ability to be more productive in their business or to support the well-being of their business and the well-being of themselves? Well, I, okay. So this is my specialty. Because it's like my superpower. <laughs> I see the awesomeness in everybody. I see things that people don't see about themselves, where they're so unique and special and different, and where they make a difference. Because in my work, that's marketing, right? That's bringing out where your unique, you know, your value prop is, where what you bring to the table that's unique and different, where you care, how you care, why you care. You know, so I'll encourage, for example, I have a client who has ADHD. And I was like, why aren't we talking about your neurodiversity? I'm like, it makes you really cool. Like you can hold so many different things in your head at once. Let's talk about that. And we wrote about that. That's one of the articles we wrote for him. And then by helping people articulate their vision, you know, through branding stuff or positioning stuff and really kind of listening to where they're special, it lights them up. And that's where they can start, they start leaning into it. And that to me is the definition of cadence, you know, and, and to you too, obviously in your book, building momentum, working with purpose, creating a meaningful life. This is all the crucial pillars of creating cadence in your work and in your life. And so, you know, for example, that one client that I was talking about that, you know, has neurodivergence, he's a CEO and he calls our meeting, we have a weekly meeting and he calls it his favorite meeting of the week. This man has so many meetings. I mean, crazy. So I think that, that that is so crucial to really understanding what your superpower is. And it's genuine. It's like, I love it when I, I see stuff about people that, you know, people, we all build up walls about ourselves and we have, you know, it's so hard to see what makes us stand out. And that's, by the way, a marketing position too. It's like how you, where you can hang your hat. 
So that's how I help my clients. And that's also how I help myself because that's fun. You know, it's really fun to have an uplifting and upbeat conversation. It's really helpful to lean into something people feel confident about that they are experts in, you know, their zone of genius. We're not just in their zone of competence. Like, yeah, you know, the ADHD CEO is genius at marketing. He has a market, digital marketing company. And we write about that plenty, but like, let's write about the other things too. It's the whole picture, yeah. you know, and by being more holistic and relatable in this world, that's a marketing thing too. It's like more and more we see, you know, consumers, they want to connect in with people and things that stand for something that are um, connected to a movement that feels good to them. And sometimes people, you know, my clients won't know what that is about them. And I help point it out. Like, actually, you think you're like, I just want to talk to women. It's like, okay, yes. And which kind of women? Like, let's mm-hmm. really dial it in because you're, you know, a successful, you've done amazing. You're so knowledgeable about website building. Let's, let's hone in who you are and who you speak to. And then you can show up authentically. And then it's easy for you. And it's easy for me to write your content. <laughs> I love that. Um, The idea of superpowers is really powerful. And, you know, when you are playing to your strengths, you're helping your clients to play to theirs. And I think that that's a really important part of creating cadence as well, is to identify how you can support yourself to play to your strengths, to use your superpowers to support your customers and clients. So as we're nearing the end, Trudy, thank you so much for this time. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Do you have any other words of advice or key thoughts or takeaways that you want to share with listeners based on your experience? Well, thanks, Mesh. Yes, I do. I mean, I think if I had to leave you with anything, it's this is it. I mean, there might be other lives, other times. We don't know. We can have our beliefs about it. But this is your time. So do the things, I mean, it sounds a little trite, but not just what makes you happy, but do the things that bring you joy. Know what they are. Spend time thinking about it and meditate on it. Really. I mean, once you meditate and you bring that into your life, when you bring mindfulness into your life, you start noticing what doesn't work. It's not just about what does. And allow it to change you. And allow it to lead you to where you are meant to be where you can serve others best, where your superpowers are, where you have meaning, where you find meaning and purpose. And when you do that, and there's no age limit, by the way, this is the most important thing. I'm 57 and I'm just getting started. So that's my other piece. Like take any ageist mentality you have out of your head, let it go. You are amazing at what you do and you can keep learning and growing and changing. So do that. Lean into those spaces and make friends with people like I did with Mish, who believe the same, who aren't just griping like, oh, I can pain. Oh, I'm too old. I'm too this or too that. <laughs> you know, let all that crap go, really. And just find the places that delight you and light you up and, and do that as much as possible because none of us know how much time we have here. And why not make the best of it? Absolutely. That's beautiful. And that really ties in a lot with what I talk about in my newsletter and the podcast around approaching life and work with courage, curiosity, and cadence. And that's what you're saying is, you know, it's not a dress rehearsal, get out there, do it. The time is now. So that's beautiful. Thank you. All right, Trudy. So where are the best places for people to find you online? And I'll obviously share all of these details in the show notes as well. Yes. Thanks, Mish. There are many, many places. So my website, my content creation website is It's the True Story. As Mish mentioned, um, my partner Diana and I lead a meditation. We have a free group meditation every week on Thursday evenings, which is not always (laughs) not easy for people in the UK, but that's okay. TheShaktiSisters.com. And also I write weekly at a newsletter called further.net with my partner, Brian Clark. And along with him and Jared Morris, there are a couple of communities that Mish mentioned. It's the Unemployable Initiative and then also Well and Wealthy, where we are helping people at midlife live their best life. And I think those are all the places. At It's the Truth Story is my handle on all the socials, like Instagram in particular. But P.S., I stopped going on social media very much, so you ain't going to see me there all that often, but come see me in the community, send me a note on my websites and yeah, that's it. That's awesome. Well, I highly recommend listeners check out all of the links, which I'll share in the show notes. So Trudy, thanks so much for your time. I truly appreciate you and being able to have this wonderful conversation with you. 
Well, I appreciate you, Mish. And for all the listeners out there, just keep tuning in because what Mish has to say and what she has to share is life-changing. And I can definitely vouch for the cadence of fact. That book is a Bible to me now. Awesome. Thank you. So I think you'll agree there are many helpful observations and takeaways in this conversation with Trudy. But to close, I want to touch on one in particular, and that is the transformational power of meditation. You probably know that meditation is a brilliant and powerful tool which supports a whole host of health, wellness, and productivity outcomes. I explain some of the benefits of meditation in more detail in my book, The Cadence Effect. But as Trudy pointed out, meditation is also a helpful addition to our Cadence Toolkit because it provides opportunities to explore and develop our self-awareness. Meditation has the power to help us become more aware of and to become more accepting of the uncertainty of the situations we find ourselves in. It helps us to go with the flow more easily and to deal better with the inevitable drama of what it means to be human. Becoming more adaptable to the dramatically changing demands of our environments helps us cultivate more flexibility and elasticity. It also builds our resilience to better handle challenges without succumbing to burnout. These are all important components of creating cadence too. A few things before you go. You can find out more about my book at thecadenceeffect.com. If you've already purchased it and found it helpful, please leave a review. It helps the book get found by those who need it. And coming in early 2024, I'm launching a new coaching cohort that is connected to transforming our lives with intentionally productive habits to help you create momentum, work with purpose, and craft a meaningful life. I'll be announcing further details about this later in the season, And my Cadence newsletter subscribers will get first dibs. So head to creatingcadence.co forward slash subscribe if you want to hear more about this first. If you like this show, please share the love by rating it on Apple, Spotify, Google Play or Amazon Music and supporting Creating Cadence, all one word, on Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee. I'll share the links to those in the show notes. So thanks again for listening. Until next time, keep moving forwards with courage, curiosity and cadence. Bye for now.